What's their mascot? Pinewood Panthers. Panthers. Yeah, I, did, I, I saw the fee. Who's the head coach for Pinewood? We happen to know. Uh, Pinewood is Jason Peary. Peary. Jason Peary. And I think it's he's the guy. That's Edmund. Ed Kelly, right there. Do they have any more media packets? This guy? Yeah. Do they have any more of those? No, this is just a program. Oh, it's a program? Yeah. Yeah. Kirsten will probably let you use her. I mean, let me just grab that for you Yeah, real absolutely. Quick. Sorry. I don't really use it. If I have that, if I have that, I don't need this. Yeah. If I've got that yellow sheet, I won't need it. Thank you so much. So that's Solomon Wolfram? Solomone. Solomone? That's what he said. He goes, yeah. Solomon with an E. So Solomone? Solomone? I think whatever you get away Solomone. with. Solomone. Yeah, just Solomone Wolfram. I think he just used the last name. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe the first time. And then, what do you think? I don't know. Well, you like it. Well, well, I like last names only, personally. Yeah. No, I'll tend to go by that. Smart. <laughs> and it's Bradley Newman. Newman, yeah. Newman with an A. Never heard that one before. Yeah. sandwich. Yeah, I know. I'll be needing one here pretty soon. So long, long day. We did four games yesterday. Yeah. And then, uh, um, yep. Basically, no breaks in between. So they brought us like candy for like, I think eight hours, eight or nine hours. All I ate was this candy and a couple strawberries. Back in 2005 or 2006 when we did the state soccer championships in Los Angeles, I got there like at 7.30 in the morning, left San Diego around 4, 4.30. Didn't 
didn't get done until like 10 o'clock that night. I just remember driving home like, I need coffee now. <laughs> so KC, you went to Santa Clara University. I played here, yeah. What high school did you go to? Los Altos High School. Los Altos, right, right on. Maybe a few minutes. Yeah, there. yeah. Are I, you from up here? I went to Delmar High School in Santa Clara. Oh, okay. yeah. Back in the day, you probably weren't even born. I graduated in 2003. Bruce Posey was a great player. Bruce Posey. Yeah. It rings a bell. For sure. I think we got him, though. So this will, I've done a lot of radio for KBC. This will actually be more of my first television-style broadcast. Okay. And I'll just kind of keep it to the general rule of thumb, 60-40. I'll kind of leave a lot of breaks. We can chat back and forth. Whereas radio, it's really more like nonstop. He gets the rebounds, yeah, you know. Yeah. Yeah, and I've only done TV, so. Right on, right on. <laughs> I've done one radio broadcast in my whole life. Really? It was, it was the uh, Santa Cruz High School State Championship. Okay. Very good. Where do you work at? Oh, I'm in the, I'm in the lending business. In the lending business. so funny. I don't know how they got that. Ryan, how did they, they, how did they get away from that sign up? They do it for radio for St. Francis. Yeah, I mean, that's a, uh, whatever, it's a radio station. I don't know, it's a separate. No, we know them really well. Okay. <laughs> Does it still go over, what is it? Okay. Well, if it comes the right thing, at some point, I mean, if we work something else. Yeah, school, school stuff. So we'll, you want to switch back and forth on the uh, commercials here? I've been doing them all, so I don't really all? care. Do you have as, long as, you do the, uh, as long as you do the uh, player of the game interview, I don't have a problem doing all the you have your own copy? Uh, you got a new one? That was the one that uh, uh, Brian just gave me. I mean, you can do some if you want. If, I don't, if you have any desire to do it. I don't mind. Chris and I started off yesterday. We were going to, because I've never done them before. Uh -huh. First time ever. And I was freaking out about it when I got here because I hadn't even read them and I was late and the whole thing. But, um, but I was telling Brian, I go, but if you want me to like, flounder through it, I don't think I particularly read well. Uh, so I, I ended up doing the first one, and it went okay. And her voice is bugging me, so I just, I just, I just continued on to do them, save her voice. So however you want to do it, very cool. Thank you. Lifesaver. Well, I, you know, and I, I got into this frenetic pace for no, no time in between games. So I was going crazy down there, and then they had the big lineup. I'm going nuts, and then all of a sudden I look up at the clock and there's 23 minutes left. You need to relax a little. Yeah, I'm gonna have my water and my coffee going. Hey, bud. Yeah, no, we're good. Uh, hey, Kelly. No, no, yeah, hands full, big time. He's a really good basketball coach.
have a golf story about really about the Vogel Air and Will Burton. They're their number one and two golfers. My son's a good golfer in that league. And they had to postpone their first match because of this game. With that process, you win it. two sets right here. I just took a couple pages down here. Oh, okay. I've got one for every game. Go so you guys can write them. Okay, hey, Sean, we can put on a headset. Uh, yep, yep. Headset. Thanks, cool. Chris. Check one, two. Check, check one, two. Check one two. Check check one two. Oh, we got the same. One two up. three four five. Test one two. Got it. Check. Central Coast Section Network. Casey Jackson, Sean Hennessy, Men's Division Five CCS Basketball Championship Game. Cool. O twelve. O twelve. I got to tell you, this is. I don't have a ton of experience doing this. It's going to be the first time I've worked with somebody other than her. Hey, no problem. It's going to be a cool. fun broadcast. Be fun. Yeah, I promise you. It'll be, it'll be fun. Excellent. Well, you should just, like, slap me in, in the thigh if I don't keep up with you. No, no. Well, I was telling Brian, like, we were talking about it. I'm so used to, you know, radio quick, gets the rebound, drives down to the bucket, and the, you know, like, yeah. now i got to slow it down a little bit. Because <laughs> I can see what's going on. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I actually like radio better. One time I did it, it's a lot more fun. Yeah. What, Brian, do you know the mobile website for this that CCS was uh, was talking about? They had like a mobile yeah. page you could go to. CISCentralCoast.tv. What do you mean? I was in communication with Justin, oh, okay. this guy from CCS who gave me all these rosters like, last night. Well, you can watch you can watch the games. If your phone does flash, you have an iPhone. Watch the game with your iPhone on YouTube. Yeah. So all the games that we're doing, they're all on YouTube live also. So he goes, check out sectionsports.com. Select an event. Central Coast section. Uh, Division 5. Pinewood, St. Francis. Wow. So, so, live feed for the sport? Someone's keeping live feed down there. It is filling it into this website. This is all mobile. Brackets. Uh, yeah, finals. So, Sean, real quick. Yeah. Kirsten was doing these. That's how they got there. Yeah, I got a. You got the bracket? Yep. Hey, you got bigger, some, uh, bigger lettering if you want. Yeah, where the first you, you already studied. Oh, I got it. Very good. I got enrollment we can talk about. We got some hand gestures. <laughs> all right. I, 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 are, we, yeah. are we good? <laughs> you can talk all that, all that stuff. <laughs> How much time we got? This is a half-court line. Oh, really? So, yeah. It's between the free throw and the baseline, it's called the key. How long is the court? Uh, what is it, 104? <laughs> what is it? I don't remember what it is. Check it out. It's right here. How long is the court? Coach's box, 28 feet. I got that. Just for reference. Doesn't matter. Coast to coast, baby.
Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Sean Hennessy here, joined alongside me, KC Jackson, broadcasting to you live from Santa Clara University. It's the men's Division V CCS Basketball Championship game featuring the St. Francis Central Coast Catholic Sharks and the Pinewood Panthers. Just like that, we are underway as Pinewood gets the opening tip off. Three ball early. KC, two teams right here that we're going to watch throughout this matchup. And in it's very interesting because St. Francis, you take a look, the height advantage is what you see so far for Pinewood. Absolutely, and strength. It's very mature adult kids for Pinewood. Eight seniors on the team. Look for this team. They want the game in the 80s. They want to run. They want to shoot the three. And they want up-tempo, and they're going to be pressing. St. Francis has to handle the press. We'll see how that happens right out of the gate here. Uh, not, not heavy pressure, but... Uh, St. Francis needs to control the tempo. That's what they're going to be doing. Kevin Sweat gets the first points of the game for Pinewood. Here's a shot, no good. Rebounded by Bradley Newman. Quick transition by Sweat, no good. Tip ball. And that one's still alive. So fast-paced movement so far here. 2-0 Pinewood advantage as that one rolls out of bounds. Well, you know, first time for St. Francis in, the, in this championship game in a few years. Nerves are going to get to them a little bit, early start. As we saw in the first girls game, Pinewood got off to a really slow start, never recovered. Not used to the start time. Here's a triple for the Panthers that goes off the rim, no good. Rebounded by St. Francis. Right now, St. Francis looks in just a bit of a hurry. Garrett Sacido's three-point try, no good, and it's rebounded quickly by the Panthers. Helvey comes up with it, and here comes the transition. Sweat will take it back and play things slowly. Six minutes, 25 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Just two points so far, Pinewood with the advantage. Nice pass by Burkett. He's their player. And that one just swatted away. Coming in was Cameron Helvey, KC. He saw that from the point, approached it to the bucket, and just slammed it out of bounds. From our, from our vantage point, we saw that one coming. But Hel Helvey made a great move, had great defensive vision. Helvey had a running start as he was able to bat that ball away. Matthews passes it over to the inside. That's Burkett with the try, no good. Coming up with the rebound is Bradley Newman. A couple rebounds here for Newman early on in the first quarter. 2-0 lead, Pinewood. And now we'll see Frioli lead the offensive attack. And how about the defense Great. here? St. Francis with a charge of their own. An easy lay-in by A.J. Figueroa. Yeah. They're going to have to play the good defensive half-court set, but this is what Pinewood's going to do right there. If they get off to a quick start shooting that three in transition, be a long night for St. Francis. Three ball no good by Newman. Recovered by St. Francis. So far, Casey, we're starting to see a very quick pace right. by Pinewood. It was early on we were discussing this. Pinewood wants to get things going, whereas St. Francis really wants to control a nice conservative tempo. Well, and it's really not their style. St. Francis, they like to be up tempo too, but they know they can't get in a track meet with Pinewood. Here's Sweat passing the ball inside to the big man, Wolfgrim. His try, no good. Wolfram just looks like a complete physical presence out on the court so far. It'll be a lot to deal with with the size of St. Francis. By far one of the biggest players on the court is Wolfram, number one for Pinewood. Here's a three ball, no good. Rebounded by Helvey. Quick transition, possible alley-oop try, up and no good by Sweat. And we get our first foul in the game. Sweat couldn't get that to drop, but again, that's the transition they're looking for. Those, that's the offense they're trying to create. You know, I got to the point a little bit earlier that St. Francis actually is a, like, they, they prefer up-tempo, but they just, they can't get in a track meet with these guys. Garrett Saucedo charged with the foul, his first. Quick substitution into the game now. We get a chance to see Josh Rose taking the place of Bradley Newman, so Rose steps in. And that'll be a, a real difference you'll see that is, will be the use of the benches. Pinewood got a very deep bench, eight, nine deep. St. Francis doesn't have that luxury. Small school, both small schools, but <laughs> much deeper bench on Pinewood side. Sweat with all four points so far for the Pinewood Panthers. And it's funny you mentioned both small schools. Pinewood with a student population of 193. 
and then St. Francis with 220. Amazing, yeah. Here's a try, no good, foul on the play, and that was Sweat once again. We're seeing Kevin Sweat with a lot of action so far. He's definitely controlling yeah. the ball for Pinewood. Well, they're getting them the ball. He's one of their leading scorers, and, and we did miss that great transition play by Aiden Matthews of St. Francis, took it coast to coast with a little runner. Great finish. Keep it a tie game. Sweat with his third free throw try. Three for three so far in the first quarter. Yeah, one of the things we're gonna need to watch is gonna be the foul issues for for St. Francis because of that bench we were talking about earlier. Make it four for four. So Kevin Sweat with all four points for Pinewood. They lead six to four here, four minutes, 36 seconds left in the first quarter. It's St. Francis Central Coast Catholic versus Pinewood for the Men's Division Five CCS Basketball Championship. One of the huge keys for St. Francis' success so far or was going to be their ability to handle the, the press. And really, the, the, the full court pressure hasn't really caused St. Francis any problems yet. Matthews inside, one on one. He'll try to post up quickly and gets it to fall. Aiden Matthews with his points, or first points of the ball game, I should say. And now we'll get a chance to see Pinewood slow it down a little bit. KC, they're, they're starting to set up an offensive formation. Yeah, they, they want the early three. First thing they want. Now was Wolfgram trying to feed that pass towards the inside, but it gets knocked out of bounds. Substitutions as we see Owen Lewis step in and coming out for Pinewood is Cameron Helvey. He'll take a breather. Sweat top of the key, feeds it inside. Here's a layup try, batted down and recovered by St. Francis. Well, you're so gonna no. see, two, again, two really well-coached teams. Ed Kelly, the coach of St. Francis, has got these kids playing really well at the end of the season. Fourth in the SCCAL. And how about Aiden Matthews, the fall-away? Six point for Matthew, great, off to a great start. Junior guard. Here's some quick ball movement, three try, good, count it. A great shot by Kevin Sweat, top of the key. Kevin Sweat. Nine left all alone. Work it, found him. And a quick timeout on the floor. A quick transition. St. Francis with an early 10-9 lead. Yeah, great start, dude. I, I think the, the Pinewood is definitely the definite favorite in this game, but St. Francis is off the start that they really needed. You can watch highlights or a replay of today's game in our on-demand section. And you can also buy a DVD or Blu-ray of today's game right on CIFCentralCoast.tv. Click on, click on Buy DVD and you can order today's game right now. Have a game that lasts a lifetime brought to you by CIFCentralCoast.tv. 10-9 our score here following the timeout and we get to see that quick pace offense style by Pinewood early on, and now they start to slow things up. But going back to a couple turnarounds, Matthew showing some quickness and getting St. Francis on top. Well, and I, I'm pretty familiar with Aiden. He was uh, part of a youth team that I coached, and really nice to see his progression as a player. Newman fouled driving hard to the bucket, and getting charged right there was Aiden Matthew swatting it away, but he'll get his first foul of the ball game. So Newman will get an opportunity to shoot two and possibly recapture the lead for Pinewood. First one good, we're all tied up at 10. Once again, 3-11 left in the first quarter here at Santa Clara University. Pinewood really been, really been solid off the free throw line to start the game. Could be a big factor down the road. And now we're seeing that man coverage Burkett's their man, number five is their guy. He's their leading scorer, averaging around 16 a game. Usually things go through him. Here's a layup try, rebounded, no good. That was Matthews tipping it back out to Burkett. Burkett very quick with the ball. Here's a quick feed inside, count it. Very nice ball movement as John Russo finishes the play. Thank you Matthews for that, keeping the ball alive. Created an opportunity to score. Here's Sweat with a three opportunity. Kevin wow. Sweat is on fire in the first quarter. They lost Berg, uh, DeVolga there again. And Sweat right now with 12 points in the first quarter. Great start. 
And they're going to so need to they're going to need to pick him up a little bit earlier. Burkett with the try, and it's going to be a lot of aggressive play under the bucket. That's Wolfgrim coming up with the rebound, and that looks like it was a two opportunity for Newman. That doesn't go in, but his player backs him up. Another one for Sway. Sway. 14 of the 16. It's pretty good. It's like on the heels of the Will Chamberlain 100, 100 point anniversary. <laughs> maybe Just the maybe other day. Mr. Sweat has that in him tonight. We'll see. <laughs> Anything's possible. Russo feeding it back over towards the wing. How about the defense being shown by Pinewood? 10 seconds on the shot clock. Here's a three pointer. Rebounded by St. Francis and put back in. So a nice job by St. Francis following up with the ball despite the missed shots, but being right there to pick up the key rebound. You gotta love their activity so far, keeping those feet moving. Oh uh, my goodness. My goodness. Kevin swept with his third three-pointer in the first 17 quarter. 17 out of the 19. Wow. I'd be picking him up at half court if I was St. Francis at this point. So here's St. Francis with the ball right now. Pinewood 19, St. Francis 14, first quarter action. Nice pass. And right underneath, too easy right there. Aiden Great Matthews. vision. Great vision by Burkett, fighting, finding Matthews for his eighth point. Just under a minute now in the first quarter. Burkett is their senior leader. <laughs> to Volgaire. Sweat. Picked him up right there, picked Sweat up, at the, didn't let him get anything off. You'll see them trying to double team him as well. And there's a hard foul committed by Matthews and it's gonna give Newman a chance to head to the line. Yeah, very, very effective ball movement there for, for Pinewood, really good. In the, they're great in transition and they're, when they get in that half court set, very effective. And he usually ends up on the free throw line when they, when they run their half court set. So Bradley Newman sinks his first free throw couple substitutions. Ricky Carrera steps into the ball game and Trey Yee accompanies him for St. Francis, taking a seat. It was Matt DeVogelaire working very hard on those last couple plays, trying to get some key rebounds, but he'll take a breather. DeVogelaire is usually a pretty integral part of their offense. They have about, uh, Burkett lead, leads them with 16, but they've got four, four guys that are right around the eight, nine point. DeVogelaire really hasn't had many touches yet, but it all goes through Will Burkett. Lewis right on Burkett. 22 seconds remaining. Burkett. Great shot. A nice under the rim toss, and it counts for two. It's 21 18, Pinewood. Great skill level there. And that one rolls out of bounds. So, some physical play. We're seeing both teams right now, Casey, not afraid to really drive hard to the bucket and try to draw that foul early on. Well, you don't get to this point in the season, a championship game, without having all of that, all of that effort, skill and effort, what it takes. Trey Yee denies Sweat's three-point opportunity, but Sweat's gonna try for a Hail Mary toss, and that one's gonna go out of bounds, and that'll do it for the first quarter. 21-18 Pinewood, impressive first quarter. Absolutely, it's exactly what they're doing. They're on pace for their scoring average, and, but it's exactly what St. Francis didn't wanna do, but they hung tough. They did, and they, were, they managed to keep it somewhat to their conservative level, but it'll be interesting, interesting to see if they can keep that going into the second quarter. Absolutely. Looking for a great place to advertise your business while reaching the greater high school community? Then you want to advertise with CIFCentralCoast.tv. We have great rates for your business while giving you the opportunity to, to get your message out to a very important demographic. For more information, give us a call at area code 619-677-3246. KC Jackson joined alongside me. Sean Hennessy here bringing you the Men's Division 5 CCS Basketball Championship game. It's the St. Francis Central Coast Catholic Sharks taking on the Pinewood Panthers right now. Pinewood with a 21-18 advantage. First quarter in the books. St. Francis trying to show that conservative style and really kind of keep the game in their own tempo. Pinewood, a much quicker transition team. Pinewood knocked off Crystal Springs and Thomas Moore to make it to this particular point in the tournament. And St. Francis was able to take down Pacific Collegiate and Priari to make it to this particular matchup. So it's one versus two here for the title. Well, and the CCS committee, the seating committee, really got this whole tournament right. There has only been one 
one matchup that's been other than one and two seeds. And we'll see that later this evening. Rebound try for St. Francis, no good as DeVolgalaire really showing some strong effort underneath the bucket as it rolls out of bounds and the foul is called. Well, and he's their most physical player, so he just didn't quite get that cripple to go back. Correction, the ball rolls out of bounds, so it'll be an inbounds opportunity here for St. Francis. Outside the wing, driving hard, and denied. No shot there. Josh Rose stepping up and putting his right hand clear on the path of the ball. And Pinewood in full momentum now. And that one is contested for St. Francis, so. I really like, I really like the half court defense that, that St. Francis is putting out so far. Rose with the steal, his drive good, count it for two. Great finish by Rose. Rose lowering his shoulder, driving left side, able to drain it. Yeah, and took it hard off the glass and still went in. Here's a quick 10 foot jumper off the rim, rebounded by Pinewood. Pinewood coming up with a key rebound. St. Francis wishes they could. But well, early offense there, not really what Ed Kelly's looking for. He wants to, wants to use clock, not play that up, up tempo style, but it's kind of out of their character because they do like to get out and run. Just they know they can't do it with, with Pinewood on the floor with them. DeVolgalaire's three pointer, no good. Another rebound for Pinewood. Six minutes, 25 seconds left in the second quarter. 23-18 Pinewood. And a nice transition pass underneath the bucket completed beautifully by Josh Bennett. Yeah, definite momentum swing there for, for Pinewood starting here in the second period. Just really picking up the up-tempo and probably the, the benefactor of St. Francis taking early offense, which is really what they don't, don't want to be doing. And I'm sure Ed Kelly's having a chat with them about that right now. And St. Francis burning uh, two timeouts, two 30-second timeouts early on here in the first half. Uh, 14 fouls committed so far by St. Francis, and I think you see what we're seeing so far uh, in a result of those 14 fouls is a lot of rebounding opportunities that aren't going their way, and then also right. the, uh, the power drives to the bucket that are resulting in those fouls. Absolutely. Ed, no question, Sean. They're, they're a physical team. They know they're, they can out-physical St. Francis. And, and it, it's proving true right now. But I, I think I think St. Francis is pretty happy where they are right now. They're they're in a position where they're it's not out of reach. It, but they just gotta gotta get away from that early offense. And we're seeing Ricky Carrera trying to kickstart the offensive series here, as a uh, a blocking foul I believe is committed against Pinewood on Owen Lewis stepping up and trying to bat the ball away. But we're seeing Carrera really trying to struggle getting these offensive formations set up. Double team being shown, double team defense being shown here. Well, they're in a total zone trapping D that is causing problems. But Aiden Matthews, extremely physical player with good hops, great finish. Nice to see Aiden getting off to a great start. And Matthews just pummeled right there as he yeah. was driving to the glass. He's a kid. I remember coaching him. He's uh, not afraid of any contact, loves to create the contact and has the quickness and the hops to, to, to finish at, at 5-11. Will Burkett standing behind Matthews as he nails the free throw try. Three point opportunity completed beautifully by Aiden Matthews. It's 25-21 Pinewood. Wolfgram, the big man, feeds it inside to his teammate who then puts it right back up. Quickly, Greg Newman. It's a deep team. Everybody's got the everybody's got the green light for Pinewood. Will Burkett trying to pass that one inside. Three defenders stepping up in front of Book, uh, Burkett's face, and that's what happens. It's a turnover and a point resulting for Pinewood. Two and a foul. Getting everything they want. They want that transition play. Couldn't be a better result for Pinewood getting the getting the three point opportunity. St. Francis uh, quickly getting, getting some starters back in the game. That's Dante Frioli who managed to come up with the strip ball, the turnover, and then driving it down the court, getting the foul and counting the bucket for two. So he'll get a three-point opportunity here and possibly make this a nine-point lead, and he does. They're getting the track meet they want right now. It's a little too up-tempo for St. Francis, and this... 
little half court trapping trap sets causes some problems for St. Francis also. And you see the defense being shown by Pinewood. Two men on the basketball every time down close to the bucket. And how about the follow up, Cameron Helvey? Well, Pinewood's taken up their intensity level, ratcheted up a, a, a couple notches, and St. Francis has yet to respond. I think they're having a hard time trying to respond with their offensive style. Yeah, they, difficulty there for De Vogel Air. Just you don't want to be jumping in the air against a trapping trapping defense like this. Don't get yourself up in the air. Kind of got bailed out with the with the with the call. Greg Newman with the foul. Fourth team foul for Pinewood. Four minutes, 37 seconds left in the first half. That one nearly thrown away, but recovered by St. Francis. That was Saucedo. As another quick foul takes place. Really, one of the only difficulties that Pinewood is having right now is, is the, the difficulty with the quickness with Aiden Matthews has been pretty much their whole offense so far. Matthews again getting the getting the contact there, going to the hoop. Kevin Sweat and Bradley Newman check in for the Panthers. Sweat the leading scorer so far in this ball game. 32-21. St. Francis trying to inch their way back into this matchup. Here's Will Burkett, the main player for St. Francis, starting the formation. That one off the rim, getting his own rebound. Up and good was Matt DeVogelaire. Great, great fundamentals there by De Vogelaire with that with the follow. Absolutely. With, I think he knew it was going to be short, so he just followed right, right in behind. Started charging the bucket. And now we see a, a sloppy play by Pinewood. Recovered by Matthews. Matthews. And he draws the foul. Having a wonderful game so far. Aiden Matthews has been their whole offense so far. Almost the spark plug for St. Yeah. Francis. The kid shows so much energy when he's around the ball. Great athletic ability, and that's really the only, only difficulties, again, Pinewood's having is matching his quickness. Seven-point lead for Pinewood. Sweat, three-pointer, no good off the mark. Air ball, as it rolls out of bounds, it'll go in favor for St. Francis. First missed three-pointer by Sweat in the ball game. But, and, and then Matthews put great pressure on him, got a hand in his face, and you know I, I think he really changed his shot. That's what they need more of. They got to defend that three-point line a little bit better, How about especially with Sweat. How about Pinewood, full court press being shown right now. Yep. They're gonna change it up. They're really, really again, trying to ratchet up the, de the defense here. And right there, the full court press, enough pressure on St. Francis, they could not get the ball down the court quick enough. It rolls out of bounds and Pinewood, another opportunity to increase that advantage. Well, and they just haven't, they, they haven't handled the, pre the, the pressure well. No, defense is uh, really, really kind of taking them out of sorts so far. Frioli drives hard, loses the ball. It gets stripped and it's recovered by Saucedo. Saucedo showing a nice defensive play along with some pressure. Matthews on the outside. Burkett, 10 footer, good. Boy, they needed that. Their first, gotta, gotta get their star going. Their first successful field goal in several minutes. Five point lead for Pinewood with three minutes remaining in the first half. Well, and that's key because you sense that it's a bigger lead right now. It's really only, only five. Kevin Sweat not afraid to take a <laughs> three point try. Coming down to earth a little bit here. <laughs> yeah, well he went three for three early on in the first quarter. He's now missed his past two three pointers. Leading scorer for Pinewood. Here's Will Burkett. A lot of pressure by Newman. Newman sticking to him like glue. Pinewood back to it, just a straight man to man. Matthews looking for anything that he can. Here's DeVogelaire, three point try off the rim and rebounded easily. Wolfgrim will try to feed it back over to Sweat. Sweat drives in, in and out. So Sweat tried to get a quick transition right there as he was halfway in the air. Pumps it up with two hands, but can't get it to fall. I'm, I'm sensing that St. Francis is comfortable with, with the, the pace of the game. I, I think that was a big concern of theirs, but I think they're, they've looked fairly comfortable with this, with this transition. It's really not killing them so far. Burkett, two-point opportunity. That one's no good. Wolfgrim with the rebound. One of the tallest athletes out on the floor. Pinewood 
not afraid to try some threes. We're seeing Sweat, and now we're seeing, uh, I beg your pardon, now we're seeing Newman going for some three-point opportunities here late in the second quarter. But you see, St. Francis is contesting that three-point line a lot better. Matthews, again, with the quickness to close, make him think about the shot a lot more. Five-point differential, Pinewood in favor here. One minute, 29 seconds left in the first half. How about that defensive play? Nearly stripped and taken down. That's Dante Frioli sticking to Burkett like glue. <laughs> well, he knows he's their guy. And, you know, at this point with Frioli, that type of pressure, ball fakes are going to be key for St. Francis to help get him open. And there's a foul by Frioli coming in. Uh, and he, knew it. <laughs> he knew it as soon as he yeah. started to, to play Oops. towards the ball. <laughs> Shows some great sportsmanship. Helping up Matthews. Matthews very familiar with the free throw line here in the first half. Leading score for St. Francis, the spark plug. Yeah, it's a it's a little bit of a surprise, that, but I love the way that everybody's been, been aware of that, and they're really working to get him the ball and, and create scoring opportunities. And he's having a great first half. Lewis in for Newman for Pinewood. Aiden Matthews has now missed his past two free throw opportunities. Doesn't like that. You're a real emotional player, Matthews. Very intense. Wolfgram feeds it top of the three-point line to Newman. Oh. Here's Sweat, wide open three, nothing. DeVogelaire so. got caught on a, on a screen there. and Again, Sweat, great shooter. But kind of, kind of coming down to earth a little bit here. Yeah. Not shy, though. He's going to keep putting it up. How about Newman trying to get this one to fall? Rebounded by himself as he's able to, to recover it just outside the box. And Sweat will drain it in with his right hand. Incredible first half by Sweat. It's kind of a Sweat Matthews contest right now. Burkett looking for anybody here. And there's the foul, finally. No, I beg your pardon. It was the penalty I committed against St. Francis. They could not get the ball outside, and that's going to switch it over to Pinewood with 33 seconds left. Well, just great half-court pressure by oh, yeah. Pinewood there. Just nobody open. Burkett couldn't find anybody, and the kid can pass. He's their, he's their point center at 6'5", and if he can't find somebody, and everybody was moving well without the ball, just great, great defensive pressure. 30 seconds left here in the first half. We'll see if Pinewood can tack on a little bit more to their 34-27 lead. Wolfgrim back outside to Newman. Newman slowing it down a little bit, 15 seconds. Wolfgrim getting his own rebound, unable to make it fall. Couple guys just got a couple, couple hands on the, that Two. finish. One, and that'll do it. First half in the books, Pinewood 34, St. Francis 27. Interesting to see how it kind of played out there, Casey, where we were watching it throughout the, uh, the early portion of the game, but you're definitely noticing that Pinewood wants to put the pressure on. They want to control that fast-paced tempo. Yeah, and, and I, I think St. Francis is pretty happy with, with their results so far. I, don't, I, I think they've got to go in and figure out a way to to win that full that half court defensive pressures on got to be setting screens getting the other guy open not just like trying to maneuver yourself open they just got to be able to handle the pressure a little bit better i think kevin sweat for pinewood and then aiden matthews for st francis two of the key players that stood out in that first half in terms yeah. of points and really being around the ball well and they they bottled up burkett pretty well they're they're leading scorer and but you know matthews stepped up nicely and and took over that uh that role. So we've reached half here at Santa Clara University, Pinewood 34, St. Francis 27. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, we'll have some more first half analysis for you here on the Central Coast Section Network. 316 left to go in this ball game. High formation, third and three from the 45 of the Wolverines. And this time, holy cow! Dion almost hands it to the Westview player. He's going to run this to the 5, 10, touchdown! Wolverines, how did that happen? Jason that was Snyder. Holy cow, he was in the backfield before the, 
running back could even get the handoff. He took the handoff from He Dion. took the ball right out of Dion's hands and just, <laughs> holy cow. Can't say I've seen that one very often. Snyder comes shooting in from the A-gap. I think Dion froze when he saw him. He's ready to hand off to his running back. He froze when he saw him and just hand, let him have the ball. 12 seconds to go. Oh, you could hear a pin drop. Five, four, three, two. Get the snap off. Last play of the game. Brewster rolls right, gets away from two sacks. Dons win, sack at the 20-yard line. What a game. And number 40, Lucas Zinder with the game-saving sack. And there is heartbreak on one sideline and a jubilation on another. Offset eye for the Grizzlies as Keeney takes it under center. They'll send a man in motion. Pitch back to Bird on the sweep. Bird finds a seam. He might go, folks. 20, 15, 10. Drags a tackler. Touchdown! Bird goes 38 yards for the touchdown on the sweep. One more snap is all it's going to take. And there you have it, folks. Your 2011 Division I Sack Joaquin section champions, the Granite Bay Grizzlies, as they defeat Pleasant Grove 30 to 24. Jacqueline Williamson. Her serve is over. Dug by Holt. Giblin going back to Holt near side. Cut shot. Kept alive. Back in one by Cathedral. And this one is out as Caston on Hill sends it wide. And the Cathedral Dons have won the title. 16-14 in game five. Thomas with the ball, swings it out to Norris. Cameron Taylor tried to block that one away. Norris with a strong take, blocked by B.J. Anya. Huge block. Robinson leading the break the other way. Gets it to Grant. Oh. Slam dunk Jeremy Grant off the feed from James Robinson. What a play by the stack. Hancock to his immediate left. Two receivers far side, one near side. Hancock on a counter, right side. He's inside the 10. He bounces off a tackler at the 10. The 5. Touchdown, Helix. And behind Hancock, the field is littered with white jerseys on the turf. Wow. Hancock not to be outdone by his fellow uh, <laughs> playmakers on offense. Put on a show on that short 12-yard touchdown run. Looked like he was down after three yards. Just threw a defender on the ground. As sophomore Chris Carter sets under center. In their tight wing formation, Lycos in motion. Second back through is Freeman. Freeman just knocking people over. Look at him run. Breaks through. Four tackles. And now it's just a foot race to the end zone. And Freeman's going to go the distance. Touchdown, Imperial, on the first play of the second half. Second and six for Imperial from their own 47. They're going to give it to Freeman again off the right, left side. And Freeman gets by one wave and down across the 20, 40 yard line. Still on his feet. Look at him run down to the 20 yard line. One man to beat. Gets by him. Touchdown, oh Freeman. How did he do that? Holy cow. 64 yard touchdown run. His fifth of the game. Royce Freeman, ladies and gentlemen, you're about to see the top rushing and the, <laughs> as I look over to our partners at KXO Radio, the top rusher wow. in the San Diego section for the next two years. That's just amazing. That is just amazing. They hit him in the backfield. They hit him at the line of scrimmage. They hit him a couple yards downfield. They hit him at Kim near no the goal five line. Second count can be started. Nobody was close enough defensively. Lyle's going to swing left side. Robinson. Here is a backdoor lob there for Grant. They've been wanting that all game. And they got it, 50-42. They lulled you to sleep, and then they hit Grant on the back door. They trail by two. McMorrow's kick is on the way, and it is good. good. St. Augustine has their first lead of the game. 21 to 20 with 25 seconds to play the senior McMorrow with a huge kick not the longest of his career but the biggest of his career oh, St. Geez. Augustine leads it 21 to already 20. lining up they won't even have to run that one more play they just act yeah, yes why bother so there you have it your five-time defending division three champions the Cathedral Catholic Dons running up over and through Olympian 41 to nothing.
here from Qualcomm Stadium. Patriots down 21-17. Great ball game here. Dylan taking it, looking right, throwing it up top to Gaines. It will be caught by Gaines. Oh my goodness. It looked like the defender had it, but Gaines stole it away from him. Jason Gaines, are you kidding me, my friend? Oh boy. It looked like for sure we had an interception by the Tories, but as they both were going to the ground, Jason Gaines just wrestled it away from him. Shane Dillon to Jason Gaines on an 11-yard play. Fanchon in the game, now out, replaced by Hayashi, the libero for defense. Wenzel serve, championship point, ball up in the air. Hayashi's going to bring it back. Richards, deep one over and three. Free opportunity. Look for Wallace. No, they go Becker. Hayashi then tap over and two by Hollingsworth. Now look for Wallace for the match. <laughs> Kathleen Wallace. No better way for the Bulls to finish it than giving it to their senior leader. 25-12, 25-15, and with eight straight points to close out their third straight D5 championship on a kill by Kathleen Wallace, 25-21 in game three. Branson has won the D5 title. To the backfield, it's Hernandez and Northcutt. Set to throw is Thomas, has time, goes for the home run. It's intercepted in the end zone. Seemed like it, they tried to go to Martin and Martin slipped. Stockton, Hillmore, and Escalon. That's going to do it, folks. Victory formation, take a kneel. The clock comes out. The clock will tick down. The players jumping up at midfield. I think I see a, a Gatorade. Did, did we have a Gatorade shower? Uh, we most certainly did. Casey Taylor getting the shower there. Very much deserved. Down to 12. Great tackle there by Ronald Williams there to make the stop for Helix. And the Helix fans are starting to celebrate here. This is going to be the final play. Five seconds. Pow Pow will hand it off. And they're going to get in the end zone touchdown. That's Keegan who gets in, but that's going to be the end of the ball game. 44 to 6 will be the score. So Oceanside scores on the final play of the ball game. And gets a consolation prize just to, to make this is kind of say that hey we didn't get shut out so 44 to 6 is your score and helix is celebrating on the sideline oceanside streak of seven straight championship games has been ended two minutes and five seconds left on the clock clock rolling third down and 15 for the patriots dylan he's got time steps up He's going to chuck it deep. He's got a man open. Seth Collins with a diving catch. He hauls it in at the 25. Oh, my goodness. I'll tell you right there. Dylan goes to show why he is a Division I prospect as he's able to step up, elude the pressure, see Collins down the field, and make the connection. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the campus of Santa Clara University. You're tuning in to the Central Coast Section Network. This afternoon's matchup is the Men's Division V CCS Basketball Championship game featuring the St. Francis Central Coast Catholic Sharks taking on the Pinewood Panthers. Pinewood with an early 34-27 lead at the half. And it's really the tempo, the transition that has given Pinewood this early advantage, Casey. That's what they're looking to do. That's the game plan. So taking it up and in on the first trip down is Cameron Helvey, and he adds two points on to Pinewood's 36-27 lead. Really looking, creating difficulty with that up-tempo pressure. Quick numbers in the first half. St. Francis, the names that we mentioned a lot in the first half, St. Francis led by Aiden Matthews with 13 points and five rebounds. Kevin Sweat leading Pinewood with 19 points, wow. 19 first half points. And here's Wolfgren surrounded by four St. Francis defenders trying to get the rebound. How about that play by Solomona Wolfgren underneath the bucket? Four guys surrounding him, and he's able to draw the foul. Well, he, offensive boards are creating St. Francis a huge problem right now. That's fourth or fifth offensive rebound here in the first half. 
Soleimani, the physical presence out there. And Soleimani had five rebounds in the first half. Yeah. As he approaches the free throw line. Sinks the bucket to make it a 10 point advantage now for Pinewood. I don't think St. Francis is too unhappy. Only nine turnovers first half. Figure out a way to take a little bit uh, better care of the ball. Got a couple turnovers already this half. Matthews getting his own rebound as the ball goes off the right side of the glass. Sets up top side now, slowing things down a bit. Figaro will give it a try, feeds it back out. Oh. And there's the foul coming to the glass hard was Matt DeVogelaire. Couldn't get it to drop. Really needed like something like that to get down, get the three point opportunity. Now he's got to hit both free throws just to get two. And DeVogelaire, one of the stronger defenders for St. Francis. Uh, really putting his hands up in key situations, driving hard to the box. He's one of those players that, you know, every coach would love to have yeah. on their team. Ed Kelly Jr. really talks a lot about him. He's one of those key players yeah, for really, the Sharks offense. Really sticks his nose in there, puts it, really puts the nose in the grindstone. Just tough, tough kid. Really nice athlete. Really small group of kids to draw on, but uh, you know, very, really well coached basketball team. Three pointer drill, Kevin Sweat add another to the stats. I think he likes the beginning of halves, you know, he's just gonna knock down that three early on. Another great looking stroke by Sweat. And the funny thing is, KC, he's hitting it from all different areas of the free th uh, the three throw line, I beg your pardon. Just top side, outside wing, anywhere he'll go for it. Yeah, and I remember why, you, you, as a shooter you want, you find your favorite spot on the court. Exactly. How about Wolfgram going strong using one hand off the glass with the spin? Yeah. I'm not sure Pinewood was all that happy with their performance in the first half. And look at look at them for to really ratchet up that intensity level a, a notch here. And they have. That one stripped away. Here's Sweat, right hand up and no good. And as he falls clear past the end line. Oh. Kevin Sweat coming up with the Figueroa got a got a couple fingers in the eye knocked over it. That always the official down. did not the official did not see it. Our officials for this matchup, by the way, Paul Bates, Lavon Doey, and Ryan McCarty calling the action. That one swatted away coming up as Will Burkett. Great check by Burkett there. Oh. And as soon as we give him a compliment right there, it, it's a sloppy transition. Yeah. Every possession here in the second half with an 11 point deficit is going to be huge for St. Francis and just little little silly turnovers like that are going to uh, really hinder him making any type of comeback. Every trip down so important now and one of the bigger leads of the ball game for Pinewood, an 11 point advantage. How about the alley-oop? Up and in! That was Bradley Newman! Great off the set play with the lob. Newman, very athletic on his finish, great finish. A two-handed alley-oop mid-air, my goodness. All sorts of athleticism shown right there by Newman. And here's a hard foul committed on the opposite end by Helvey. <laughs> you love seeing them when they knock them down real hard, oh. when they go down and offer them the hand to help them up. Great job, great sportsmanship by Helvey there. Absolutely, I'm sure it's something that every division in the state of California, not only that across the country, would love to see yeah, the yeah. CCS showing some great sportsmanship here. Yeah, t again, it's that's a tribute to coaching. Absolutely, absolutely. You need to get Burkett off here. He needs to figure out a way to be the force that he's been in the in the conference, first team All Conference player at Santa Cruz County Athletic League. Lewis checks in for Pinewood. Pinewood now with a 12-point lead. Their largest lead in the ball game. 5-17 left in the third quarter. How about Wolfgren, the big man driving hard and counts it off the glass. Really showed great patience on that finish. Held it off just for a minute and let the defender go by and got the shot off and, and great accuracy. He's a big guy too, driving hard to the lane like that. He had to get low, bring his left shoulder down and really put that one up with some nice English on it. And he held it nicely. DeVogelaire just got, just got racked. Taking the ball to the hoop there. He couldn't get it to fall. And again, kind of would have been nice to get that one to drop. Not have to make 
all the points on the free throws here. DeVogelaire, another opportunity at the free throw line. Trying to get St. Francis back into this matchup. He drills his first shot, 46-33. Looking down on the court, you see Aiden Matthews checking back over towards the sideline, getting some last minute instructions from head coach Ed Kelly Jr. As the second free throws, good, 46-34 Pinewood. How about this, Wolfgrim, the big man playing point, going right <laughs> side. And he gets that one stripped away. I guess I spoke a little too early. <laughs> well, and I, I, I was just going to say, so important for St. Francis for their efforts to make a comeback to get a couple stops here in a row. Matthews unsuccessful. His teammate Russo coming up with the shot. Great ball fake there by Russo to get the defender up in the air and had the composure to stick the little eight-footer. Here's Kevin Sweat, the leading scorer for the Panthers. Driving left side, tucks once and nails it. My goodness, Kevin Sweat. Split the defenders, little hesitation. That kid's an athlete, I tell you what. Yeah. Kevin Sweat right there, going left side, dribbling left, bringing it back in towards his abs, putting it up at the last second off the glass. A beautiful picture, perfect play. Great finish. 12-point lead for Pinewood. Matthews draws the foul, and right now we're seeing that, that score in terms of the differential stay the same, 11 points, 12 points. And that's where Pinewood really wants to keep it as Matthews drills his first free throw. Well, at Pinewood, they have no, no problems. They got a lot, of, a lot of confidence on the offensive side of the, of the court. And, I, I, and again, St. Francis got to figure out a way to get a few stops in a row to make any dent in this lead. They haven't, they haven't really done that yet. Matthews two for two on his opportunity. Here's Sweat, top of the three-point line. Feeds it back over to the left. That one up, no good, rebounded by Matthews. Matthews, better look out, because there comes the strip. You're seeing Pinewood put on that defense. They do not give up. That was Helvey showing the speed. And there's the hard oh. slap in the three. You've got to be kidding me. Bradley Newman, a four-point opportunity. Wow. Matthews got the hand up, just barely got the contact. But probably one of the most unusual plays in basketball coming up potentially here with the four-point play. You just don't see it all no. that often. And it, you, can, you heard the slap clearly yeah. Yeah. on the hands. Got it. As Newman drills it. Four points right there. You just don't see it all that often yeah, in basketball. It's wonderful. And it's really hard to, to do if you try to compare it to someone at the NBA level. A lot of times you saw Allen Iverson really try to fade away <laughs> or drive into his opponent to drill the three-pointer. He would get it every now and then. Yeah, yeah. But right there, a beautiful opportunity completed by Bradley yeah. Newman. Walking. And a traveling call committed against St. Francis. And right now, it's all pine with the momentum, the yeah. scoring, the energy. They are really closing out this third quarter yeah. strong. St. Francis is just really out of sorts at this point. It's a little deflated. Yeah. 14-point advantage for the Panthers. Wolfgrim being covered one-on-one. -on -one. Fakes, move. drives inside. How about yeah. that? Yeah, excellent move to the basket. Again, with... Uh, with his size, it's just so difficult for anybody to match up with St. Francis with him. Here's another strip. Off the glass, and there's the foul. Forcing the foul right there. Garrett Saucedo with no choice. Frustration being shown by Saucedo, but at that particular point, he had to draw the foul at 3.09 left in the third quarter. Well, Bryce took it strong to the hoop, you know, just created the contact, got the foul and a uh, chance to increase the lead. Want to have your game broadcast live on the internet and be able to watch it again and again on demand while making money for your sports program? Want to give your students the opportunity to create their own broadcast for your school's athletic events? Then contact us at info at kbcsports.com. We offer season packages for schools, a full curriculum for your students, and an opportunity to raise up to $10,000 for your sports program. Again. That's info at kbcsports.com or give us a call at 619-677-3246. KC, uh, third quarter right here. Pinewood, 
there, you're seeing all sorts of athletes really stepping up. Sweat with a couple key plays. Wolfgram driving hard to the bucket. That kid is just, you know, six foot plus of pure energy at, at some moments playing the key. Well, physically, he's kind of a man among boys right here. And, uh, you know, I was actually waiting to see that him, him actually finish a couple plays early early in the early in the game he really wasn't doing much of anything but uh, he certainly uh, caught his stride so to speak to uh, show his physical presence and he's uh, kind of a big load for the, the the undersized sharks of St. Francis how about Bradley Newman on that three-point try this place just went bananas yeah, when yeah. he drilled it got the foul was able to complete the four-point try yeah and you could sense the the slumping of the shoulders a little bit from the from the St. Francis squad. Here now is Owen Lewis at the free throw line. So now they're just hoping that you know it doesn't continue out to be a blowout. And, and don't look for uh, Pinewood to slow anything down anytime soon. Three minutes to go here in the third quarter. 56-38 Pinewood. Nice play. Unsuccessful for St. Francis. That was Carrera who had an open shot but couldn't get it to drop. But on the flip side, Pinewood does, and that's Lewis, the man that was just at the free throw line a few moments ago, steps back from 12 feet and nails it. Yeah, and I think the, the, the depth and the bench of Pinewood's really, really showing the, that that's one of the strengths that they have at this point. Three-point opportunity off the rim, rebounded. Lewis all over the place now. Your bench man definitely being noticed in the third quarter. Wolfgrim yeah. up and in. Too easy. Yeah, well. Way too easy, but he wasn't really getting those in the first half. No. And, and St. Francis needs to figure out a way to get that first rebound and not, not let not let Wolfram get a second chance opportunity. Matthews gets around Sweat and drops it. I was going to call that at the beginning. Interesting matchup with Aiden Matthews and Kevin Sweat. Matthews able to get around the left side of Kevin Sweat, drive hard to the lane for two points. Yeah, you got to love the way he stepped up in this game. And there's a foul being drawn. Wolfgram, the full force, going right side as he heads to the line. A 6'4". I'm not sure what his weight is. They don't, they don't list the weight, but he's got to go you know, 6'4", 200, my guess, 200 plus. Just extremely physical player with, with great ball skills. Pinewood with a 20-point lead now here in the ball game as Wolfgren misses his first free throw, 60 to 40 with 152 left in the third. And you're seeing a lot of substitutions taking place now. St. Francis getting some of their key players a breather. They're gonna need him for the fourth quarter for sure. And I love the demeanor of Ed Kelly. He's, he's over there, each guy coming in, he never gets excited. I've watched him over the years and he, he, even, he never changes his expression on his face during the game, always, even if things are going horribly like they are for him right at this moment, he just uh, stays real positive with the kids. Head coach Jason Perry for the Panthers was the first person to greet Kevin Sweat as he came back into the bench. Dante Frioli took his spot, but head coach Perry very happy to see his strong shooter perform. And how about a strong shooter, <laughs> Aiden Matthews? I love Matthews. After he hit that, looked over the bench, gave up the bench a little, a little, whoa, not bad, eh? Need a whole lot more of that. Need, need it from somebody else, Absolutely. quite frankly. There's Matthews once again. I tell you what, Matthews, going back to that spark plug analogy to kind of give him that reference that the kid shows so much energy, so strong when great he tries heart. to go after yeah, it. Yeah, great heart. He's got hands everywhere. Uh, but unfortunately, it was him that created that play that kind of changed his third, third period mm -hmm. that fourth, with that foul on that four-point play. Pinewood slowing things down a bit as Wolfgroom takes it top side. They're going to kill that shot clock down to the very last seconds. Five on the board, four. Here's Wolfgroom back outside. Three ball. Goes off and out, and it will go into possession for St. Francis. Uh, it didn't hit anything. Shot clock violation. We call that the old air ball as it <laughs> rolls out of bounds. Coach Perry was trying to get the deflection, but I don't think he realized that it hadn't hit anything. That's Fioli yeah. fighting for the ball right there. Relentless pressure by Pinewood. 
And that's their style. They want to be quick on the transition, quick on the trips down to the bucket, and defensively, they really want to show that press, that man coverage, and when at the last second you think they're going to go man, they split deep to the zone right underneath the bucket, and it forces a lot of pressure on St. Francis. Triple team by Burkett. Can Carrera do anything with it? Matthews. Another. This Aiden Matthews having the game of his life, and it's really great to see. This kid is impressing a lot of people here at Santa Clara University. His father actually attended Santa Clara University. 18 seconds left here in the third. 60 to 46, Pinewood Panthers one quarter away from capturing the Division V title. Can they hold on to the lead? Here's a nice layup try, no good. Rebounded by St. Francis. Ball still alive and whistles are blown with just over one second left. Foul called. Not in the bonus yet. And getting charged with the foul was Trey Lee. 14 fouls for both teams here as we get ready to approach the fourth quarter. Really important for St. Francis here to figure out a way to not let him score. Oh, man. From here, that looked pretty. Uh, <laughs> it was right. It, it was looked like I had the great distance, but it was just offline a little bit. 60 to 46, Pinewood with the advantage as we head into the fourth quarter of the Men's Division Five CCS Basketball Championship. KBCSports.com will be providing live audio coverage of the state regional basketball championships as well as the finals. March Madness comes to high school basketball in California on March 17th for the regional basketball championships. Four venues of coverage around the state. Then the following weekend, March 23rd and 24th, it's the California State Basketball Championships. You can catch it all on KBCSports.com, your home for high school sports. The Play On High School Sports Network showcases great high school games every week, and now you can access our content using multiple platforms. Follow us on Facebook, get the latest news on Twitter, or catch our highlights in high definition on YouTube. All of our content can now link to your favorite social media site. Share all the high school action you see every week. Brought to you by your home for high school sports, the Play On High School Sports Network. KC Jackson joined alongside me. I'm Sean Hennessy. Three quarters in the books here at Santa Clara University. You're tuning in to the Men's Division V CCS Basketball Championship game here at Santa Clara University. KC Pinewood energetic, taking some big three-point shots. They've got the big players, and right now they have that key 60-46 to 46 advantage. Well, the big story has been the, the, the Sweat and Matthews matchup. Both teams, but difference has been the... Pinewood's gotten a little more help from the supporting cast. Frioli drills a three-pointer just outside the wing, pumping up the crowd here for the Panthers. It's exactly what St. Francis didn't need right there to start the fourth period with the huge deficit. Helvey with the rebound as that one goes clear across the court, out of bounds. It will. That's a rare turnover for Pinewood right there. Yeah, I was going to say it maintains in the possession of... of uh, Pinewood at the last second they signal that they will give it over to St. Francis 724 left in the fourth quarter and here's a guy Ricky Carrera who has been trying to get the offensive plays set up from the get-go but the defensive pressure by Pinewood has been so enormous and, and I'm not I, St. Francis isn't used to going this deep in their bench that much but the te up tempo has really created a need for to, to protect the, the fatigue factor Yee gets credit for the rebound. Can Carrera finish strong? Burkett off the glass, draws the foul, no bucket. Actually, it's gonna be offensive. offensive That's gonna yeah. be the charge. How about that? Will Burkett gets up a little bit frustrated right there. Yeah, you can see it all over his face. Yeah. Just didn't quite have the ability to get around that contact and Pinewood player just held his ground. Good call. Bradley Newman one-on-one, -on -one, goes around the legs, feeds it out to Fioli. And that one gets turned over. For a second, I thought Newman was going to try to drive hard to the bucket before he passed it out. A uh, good defensive set there for St. Francis. Whistle blown on the three-point try as Trey Yee tries to grab three points for St. Francis. 
Six minutes, 31 seconds remaining in the ball game. And it's important to mention too, uh, last year Pinewood defeated Mid Peninsula 71-66 in the championship game. Men's Division Five, so they are looking for their back-to-back -back Division Five championship. Solid squad. That's Jeez, those, uh, just not taking the, I think, an appropriate amount of time. He has his own little rhythm and technique, but I'd like to see a little bit more uh, thought put behind that. Important to mention too, this is a three-point free throw opportunity as Yi was fouled behind the three-point line. Missed his first two. Can't afford that. Charity strike. Get the charity strike down big double digits. You got to be knocking down those free throws. And at this point, too, with your team trailing 63-46, uh, any points, any type of momentum you can give to your squad to try to make it a closer game, yeah. it, it means that much more. St. Francis back to their core starting group. And going back to the size of these two schools, Pinewood with an enrollment at 193 students, St. Francis 220. So definitely uh, two of the smallest schools that you'll witness here on the Central Coast Section Network this afternoon. Well, and St. Francis is a relatively new school. I think it's only been in existence for seven or eight years. It says a lot about their basketball program to get to this level consistently. Yeah, and they brought in Ed Kelly and you know, things changed almost immediately. Really built the program nicely. Bradley Newman commits the foul on Matthews as he tries to drive to the lane. He'll draw the foul, and St. Francis will be able to inbound it here. 63-47 Pinewood. I think at this point, maybe a 16-point 16, 16 deficit, maybe too much to overcome. I think St. Francis is just looking to make a nice, respectable finish, make it close. Matthews. <laughs> That's a good start right there. Matthews is just on fire. I think he's hit his last four threes, hasn't he? He had 13 points in the first half, and the kid has been everywhere all over the court in the second as he drills a three-pointer. And he cuts the lead back down to 13. At one point, it was a 20-point advantage for Pinewood, but now it's down to 13 as another foul is committed on the court. This one will go against St. Francis. A.J. Figueroa charged. DeVogelaire just turned his ankle, and that, that's going to really hurt him and get that inside presence out of the game to, to compete with Wolfram. Need a highlight video for your athlete working to earn that four-year scholarship? Then you want to contact kbcsports.com. We can provide recruiting videos for any athlete in any sport. Not only that, but we give you your own recruiting page right on our website. No more mailing DVDs to colleges. Instead, email coaches the link to your personal page. For more information, including pricing, contact us at recruits at kbcsports.com or call us at 619-677-3246. Sixty-three fifty is the score here at Santa Clara University. You're tuning in to the men's Division Five CCS basketball championship game. Aiden Matthews uh, going back to St. Francis. The deficit right here stands at thirteen, but Matthews has really kept St. Francis in this matchup. At one point, it was a twenty-point differential. Absolutely, and it, Pinewood's done such a great job at, at bottling up Will Burkett this whole game and. And you can see, uh, sense and see that frustration that, that Burkett has had in his face, but <laughs> Aiden Matthews is uh, really enjoying himself out there, even though he knows he's behind by, by 13. Now, Casey, it's a great point. Burkett is the go-to player for St. Francis. When you think about this basketball squad and how it got to this point, Matthews is a huge contributor, but Will Burkett is the number one name that pops out at you. And so far here this afternoon, a lot of frustration as he's been double, triple teamed and hasn't been able to get the good shot selection that he wants. And that's a sign, of, another sign of great coaching by Pinewood. They know who the, the guy is, the, he's their guy. They're gonna right away, right into a double team off the press. Yeah. But he just hasn't been able to get freed up to take anything because he's really got a great outside shot. How about the steal by Lewis? <laughs> Saucito in transition. He was a blur getting back there, huh? And I tell you what, Owen Lewis coming strong off the bench. We've mentioned his name a yep. couple times here. He has played some outstanding defense in the second half. It's wonderful there. 
great, great overall team defense concept that Pinewood has. Burkett tried to steal that one away, but Sweat recovers. Newman feeds it out to Sweat. Sweat, open look, takes it off the rim. Rare miss there. Just over five minutes remaining in the fourth quarter. Pinewood 64, St. Francis 50. Surprised Matthews didn't take a shot right there. No one on him for his initial response to the basketball. Now he's going to try it inside. Ducks under and in. Wow. The kid is impressive. Great fun. This would be a good, he's a junior. Be a great launching point for his senior year. Great Absolutely. confidence builder. Absolutely. As Lewis coughs up the ball but gets it out to his teammate Newman. Need stop they needed. I mean, there's time left. A 12-point deficit. It's really, the, you get the sense that it's a much bigger lead than this, but it, it is manageable if they can keep getting the ball to Matthews. <laughs> Matthews passes it over to his wingmate on the outside wing. Saucedo no good on the three-point opportunity. Pulling up for a three of his own. Oh, wow. Count it. Bradley Newman. Newman says, okay, you missed yours. I'm going to give one a try for myself as he drills a three. That's the beauty of the three. It's just a manageable lead. Just taken into a, a, a deficit that may it becomes unmanageable. 67-52. Pinewood with the advantage in St. Francis. Sloppy ball movement right there as they chuck it out of bounds. Yeah, one of the few few mistakes that Mr. Matthews has made all day. Timeout on the court. 346 left in the fourth. 67-52 Pinewood. Catch the best Central Coast section basketball on CIFCentralCoast.tv. You can watch a replay of today's game after each one concludes. Plus, check out game highlights, player of the game interviews, and more. Or order a DVD or a Blu-ray disc of the game. We're your home for high school sports, CIFCentralCoast.tv. Fourth quarter action here on the campus of Santa Clara University. A beautiful afternoon throughout the Bay Area. Temperatures hovering in the mid-60s. We're indoors for the remainder of the day here on the Central Coast Section Network. And right now, it's the St. Francis Central Coast Catholic Sharks taking on the Pinewood Panthers. Pinewood at one point with a 20-point advantage. Now it's been trimmed down just a little bit. Aiden Matthews coming up big time with some key clutch shots. But Pinewood utilizing the big men, utilizing Kevin Sweat. And then how about Dante Frioli drawing some three-pointers of his own? Well, and they just, every time that St. Francis makes any type of threat, Pinewood comes up with the answer and comes up with the goods and, and responds really well. Pinewood. One, of the, one of the things that I've noticed in the, this is the first boys game where there haven't been like massive rooting sections for, for either school, but <laughs> I'm not, they're such small schools as mm -hmm. we've been talking about. Yeah. It just, you don't, you don't see that, so. If you combine, if you combine the two sto uh, total <laughs> student populations, we're talking under 500 yeah, students. Exactly. It's but a beautiful campus down in Watsonville for St. Francis. But the fans that are here have showed up in full force, signs across the uh, visitors section as well as the home section. Saucedo, what a great close and block on Newman. I'm not sure that Newman doesn't think that they're a little uh, contact to get able to get sent to the line. Newman inbounds the ball to Wolfgram. Wolfgram gets his own rebound, puts it up, and gets fouled. And that's just six foot four power trying to get his own rebound. He'll head to the line. Yeah, he's very aware of his size and strength advantage that he has. Really, the point of his game is to get in there and get that thing done. Three minutes, 20 seconds left in the fourth quarter as Wolfgram misses his first opportunity. And uh, what a way for the seniors here for Pinewood to close out their basketball adventure going back-to-back -back titles uh, as it appears. But, you know, any, anything can happen in the final couple minutes. Well, and they're, you know, they're pretty senior-laden. they got eight, eight seniors on the team, and they're going to be a little bit more inexperienced. But Pinewood has a way of uh, uh, replenishing their, their assets. And right now, if you're St. Francis, Consider getting that ball to Matthews, but Burkett steps up and yeah. just drills it to the lane. He's able to get two points. Well, both teams are going to continue on in the NorCal uh, NorCal tournament, but you like to see Burkett uh, 
finish off his CCS career in a, in a nice fashion, and that was a good start right there. Most definitely. Lewis being covered one-on-one. -on -one. Newman feeds it back out to Wolfgram, and now he'll slow things down. Eight seconds on the shot clock. Backs it up, left hand foul. Yep. That's a big load for, for Burkett, and massively, not, not height-wise, he's a 6'5", but probably outweighed by about 60 pounds. And you see Garrett Saucedo try to close in right there as well, but uh, Wolfgram just too much to handle as he does yeah. that beautiful spin move yeah. up with the left hand. Well, si size, strength, and quickness, and Burkett kept himself in front of him the whole way, but just couldn't, couldn't get it done there in the end. And Wolfram had the, got the contact. Will Burkett will take a seat, taking his place. And he doesn't want to come out. He's questioning Coach. That coach would. Yeah. It's like, I want to stay in. Matt DeVogelaire will come on to the court. Standing ovation for Will yeah. Burkett. He's, He's had a fans. wonderful year. Absolutely. Like yeah, it's a deserved rest because he doesn't get a break very often. He's on the court pretty much 32 minutes a night. Mm -hmm. And like we were discussing, Casey, he's one of those key names that pops up in your head when you think about this basketball program for St. Francis Central Coast Catholic. Uh, just today, a, a frustrating afternoon. He's yeah. had a couple key plays in, in the quick transition. Um, but you have to give credit as well to his teammate, Aiden Matthews, stepping up big time, drilling some key three-pointers. Yeah, and he, you know, it, it, that's what they needed when the focus was on Burkett the whole time for Pinewood. And, and somebody needed to step up, and it, it was Matthews for sure. 15-point advantage for Pinewood. Air ball no good by St. Francis. Wolfgram feeds it out to Sweat. Sweat fakes the three, tries the two, in and out. Matthews. Oh. Matthews puts it up for his teammate, but it's Wolfgram instead who comes up with the ball for the Panthers. I tell you what, you saw about Two or three good, good rebounding opportunities <laughs> right there by both squads. But it's Newman once again that comes up, or Wolfgram, I beg your pardon, that comes up with it. Yeah. Wolfgram, I, he could, he's had a bunch of, bunch of opportunities that kind of, kind of missed a little bit. That little cripple's real close in, and St. Francis getting their little hands on it and creating a few problems with him. But uh, he's definitely been the presence out there physically. Under two minutes remaining now in the fourth. 69-54 Pinewood. Kevin Sweat slowing things down a little bit, waiting for the offense to rotate. Aiden Matthews taking a taking a turn on Wolfgram. Keeping my eye on Bradley Newman. Always starts out at the wing, but when he gets his hands on it, he's more than willing to drive to the bucket. One on the shot clock, uh, and that's good. Boy, that, that's excellent, excellent execution. Great ball movement. Work the clock down the last second. Knock down the three. That's the ultimate offensive set right there. Down to the very last second, and that was Greg Newman who drills the deuce. Heat check for Matthews. <laughs> Foul called on the shot attempt. One minute, 12 seconds left in the ball game. And folks, we'd like to remind you to stay tuned for the CIF Central Coast TV post game show where we will select our player of the game as well as wrap up all the action from this ball game. That's coming up following the game on CIFCentralCoast.tv. Aiden Matthews sent off the court. Well-deserved rest. Nice to see. Uh... Cameron Helvey takes a seat as well for Pinewood. Nice to see Coach Peary kind of call off the dogs a little. As soon as St. Francis starts getting their, their players off the court. Like to see him get a couple of his players like Sweat and Wolfram off the, off the court, give them a chance to get the warm reception from their crowd. John Russo good on his first try at the free throw line. See if he can make it two for two, and you'd have to imagine that St. Francis would be in full court press here to try to get that ball and possibly tack on some last minute points, but the rebound goes <laughs> over to Wolfram. I think there's a little resignation in the in the St. Francis group. They're not they're probably not going to be doing much fouling or trying and, try and delay this game any further. Here's Wolfgram getting two. Check that three of his own rebounds <laughs> as he's able to fall. Count it for two. Wolfgram having a great fourth quarter. 
74-55 Panthers. Here's Russo. Pump fakes. Passes inside. Beautiful. Great pump. Ball Beautiful. fake there. A.J. Figueroa. We'll have some quick substitutions. Kevin Sweat will take a seat. One of the key contributors for Pinewood. Coming in for his place is Dante Frioli. And right. now we'll see Pinewood just kill out that clock. Yeah, Sweat with a wonderful game. Really was the, the catalyst for them. Pretty much dominating early on and, and throughout the game. And Pinewood will conserve as much time as possible. They're in no hurry. No reason to score. Game's over. And how about Pinewood? They will capture back-to-back -back Division V titles as you hear the crowd counting down the final seconds. And it's over. Congratulations to the Pinewood Panthers. They are your 2012 Division V CCS basketball champions. A little too much for, for St. Francis to handle. They knew they had their hands full. Seating lived up to be the be true. Uh, Pinewood just too much, too deep, too experienced with eight seniors on the group. Great, I thought it was a great effort by, by St. Francis. Uh, very game effort. Matthews, wonderful game. Uh, but seriously, Mr. Sweat, Kevin Sweat, was the, the catalyst for, for Pinewood winning this championship. And I would say he is very deserving of player of the game honors as well. We'll uh, had, that, a, yeah. had a lot of key shots, started the momentum early on, chilling those back-to-back three-pointers. Yeah, just a, a great effort by Pinewood. Congratulations, they're a, a really good squad. And, and Ed Kelly, again, he knew what he was in for, and I, I think they put up a really nice showing. All righty. Final score, 74-57. Pinewood captures the Division V title. Kevin Sweat has earned our player of the game honor. So when we come back, I will have a live interview with Kevin Sweat coming up shortly here on the Central Coast Section Network. Fourth and 10 from the 41 yard line for St. Augustine. Kennedy dropping back to pass. Looking left, firing, incomplete okay. intended for Nolan. No penalty flags on the field. Mar Vista will take over on downs, and Jordan Lertique will take that knee. And the Mar Vista Mariners knock off the number two seeded St. Augustine Saints at Mesa College in a dominating performance on both sides of the football for Mar Vista. They trailed 14 to nothing and came back. Again, down 2 0, facing adversity. And they've really just turned the table around since game number three. Set an attack, great block made back inside the Maverick zone. A chance there by, uh, by Bosback back inside the Maverick zone. Ball attacked there by Bosback. A second opportunity by Bosback. Lift violation, call. Uh, winner, oh. it's the over, the over the net call. Oh my goodness. Bosback reached over on the attack. A Maverick error wraps up the title for the Presentation Panthers. A 15-9 victory in game number five, and they wrap it up coming back from 2-0 down match-wise and take it three games to two. 36-35 and driving, and oh, baby! Shrigley with a jam, and it was with emphasis. And it's the foul, and listen to these fans. <laughs> Do you know who's standing up right behind us? Tony Bland, who is the head recruiter for San Diego State. <laughs> I think he's drooling. Somebody get that man Ooh. a napkin. Quick score on this drive. There goes a hand off to Zeller, trying to go straight ahead, but he is met by Wall. Now he breaks out to the outside, gets across the 30, 35, on the right, 40, midfield. He's running down the sidelines. He's going to go all the way. And he's at the 10, 5, touchdown! Patrick Zeller, got he stood up at the line of scrimmage and broke out to his left to the far sidelines, and he was in a foot race, and he went all the way for the touchdown, broke a tackle, and made it nice and showed his speed as he got outside for the touchdown. Back in the backfield to the left is Campbell. Hernandez takes a snap, play action to Campbell. Looks down the field. Now here comes the pressure. He's going to be hit. He breaks the tackle, rolls left. 
Now he's going to cut up field. He's going to break another tackle, and then another tackle down the sideline. Gets a block inside the five. What a touchdown! Hernandez goes 33 yards in spectacular fashion, breaking four tackles along the way, including two in the backfield, and Hilltop has tied this one up at 29. And reasonably so, he's been doing a good job of leading this offense. Looking for his first touchdown pass of the season for Ray Hudson, and Ray Hudson gets both feet inside the end zone. Touchdown foothill. Like you said earlier, 6-2 body frame, and can probably, in what, you, what we just saw there was getting Randy Moss, was what we call getting Moss. Um, clearly just leaped over the defender there, landed both feet in, feet in bounds. Grant with a big, strong defensive rebound. He brings it back down the floor again in another slam dunk. Jeremy Grant can run the point, and he can fly. Huge dunk, two big dunks in the last minute. Muller trying to close it out. Deep ball, up in the air, cram. Bringing it back, Arbizo. Cram over in three, free opportunity. Look for Rotobaugh, no, pass middle, Weimer! Ball game. 25-19, Foothill wins it, three games to one. Because this kid has definitely proven that he he, um, he can make things happen here in this ball game. They will go with him, Bula Graft on a stretch run, just breaking tackles. The little man is in the clear to Tory Territory, the 25, the 20. The 10, the 5, touchdown Knights. What a run, the freshman, Bula Graft. Ooh, I tell you what. There were at least three times on that on that run that he should have gone down or he should have been wrapped up. Missed tackles there, cost, cost La Jolla Country Day as Bula Graft, the freshman running back for Bishops, is able to take it in. And, and that was a determined run there, Andy, by. So first and ten, Brandon Lewis in the shotgun has time to throw, and he will fire, and he has a man diving catch. Did he hold on to it? He did. What a catch from Kendall Keys. And that may be the KBC Sports Player of the Week. <laughs> what a catch by he laid himself wow. out there, and a great throw, as you said. Read, read it nicely, did Lewis, and really caught his receiver on the go and just kind of put it out there right on the outstretch of his fingertips. He laid out and he made it. No he doubt. might be called upon to make a crucial kick. Second down and eight after the two-yard gain on the receiver screen. And Ooh. Paulson fires across the right seat for Jack Finney who makes the catch. Stiffs arms of Fender at the 50 and is finally brought down at the Amador Valley 45-yard line. Flags flying later to go play. for it. Fourth and three. They figure three is easier to get than the field goal at this point. And it's Paulson looking for Finney. Right seam, side, right seam, touchdown. Jack Finney makes the catch. Bounces off a defender. A 23-yard pass and catch from Paulson to Finney. And the Foothill Falcons are back out in front. They certainly are. Finney lining up a tight end. I had a feeling that Paulson was going to look right side there as Chase Miller was lined up. Receive a far side. But instead it was Finney straight to the post. And Paulson picks him out in stride again. The third catch on the drive for Finney. give it to Tyree on an exchange against the zone. Do a little three-man weave. This is Tyrell back with it. Tyrell's going to go lob back door. Tyree Robinson with a flush. Now that was nice. Very nice design play. Uwaba. Uwaba back there. Bogart takes a snap. He's going to run the play. He's going to throw. He's got a man open at the 10. It's under thrown. It's incomplete. No, or is it caught? It is a catch. Wow, juggling catch inside the five-yard line. Maliga. Was that Maliga pulling that one in? It is Maliga. Boy, that ball was deflected by, by one of the Falcons. And then Maliga, he lands on the ground and pulls it in. What a catch. Set up with three men in the backfield, back to the wing. This time inside counter Telefaro. No, they're going to throw this one. He's got a man open. And a great, what a great, what a catch! What a grab by tight end Joe Gigantino. He must have bobbled that ball four times in the air, and he was actually tipped by the defender and had the presence of mind to keep his concentration and make the grab. Unbelievable catch 
and the ball at the 29-yard line of the Eagles, and you can see the defense, they're still bewildered. How did he come up with that Unfazed, grab? Unfazed, even with two defenders around him and four big, that's so unconventional for a guy to handle the ball so well. January oh. with the one-hand jam. He was not going to be denied there coming over with Milmo. Bradshaw Christian is going to bring the starting unit out on the field one more time just to take a knee. Ten seconds left. They better hurry it up. Actually, they're going to try a field goal for Lawson. They're not. They're going to run out of time. Are they going to take? There's a snap, and they aren't even going to get the kickoff. They tried to hustle Lawson out there for a field goal opportunity to see if they could get her one, but it does not matter. They don't get the punt off in time. Drew Rickert just got the Gatorade shower on the sideline. Bradshaw Christian is your winner, 62 to six. The final score, they are your D6 Titleist this year here in 2000. Five seconds left, clock winding down. Poway has won the title. 56 to nothing over the Vista Panthers. The championship goes to Poway. Well, your double wing T option offense down by five. They're going to have to spread it out. They go with three receivers to the near side. That's the short side. One solo left. Back to throw. McHugh. McHugh under pressure. Rolls out of it. Now he's dumped and dropped. And that's the last thing they could handle. And that's not what they could do. Bellerman now can't stop the clock. Four, three, and that is going to do it. Santa Margarita coming back from the dead, has won the Division I State Bowl Championship 42-37 in an improbable comeback against Bellarmine of San Jose. And the Bellarmine players on the field, on their knees, just absolutely dejected after playing just a just a gut-wrenching football game. About how he's going to throw the football on this play. And <laughs> Westlake might have been daring him to do so. Just joking, though, folks. Peros is going to take a knee. He does. That's going to wrap it up. Well, I'll tell you what, Westlake had an outstanding year. They win the Southern Section title, never easy. They went 14-0 coming in. They're going to finish 14-1. and And there is no shame in losing to the De La Salle Spartans. De La Salle wins at 35-0, KBC Sports. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Santa Clara University. Kevin Sweat, our player of the game. Sir, coming up with around 25 points in this men's Division Five championship game. You hit a couple big three-pointers early on. Talk to us about it and how it really kindled your offensive momentum. Um, <clears throat> well, I think it, it started to get us going, but um, that, that's definitely not what won the game. We won the game by pounding it inside in the second half. Um, we just, for some reason, we weren't getting it inside like we should in the first half. And um, I was just fortunate enough to make the first couple threes. And it really seemed like your team started to, to sort of build off that, the 74-57 final. As you mentioned, a pure team effort. Everyone stepping up big time. Talk about the defensive pressure a little bit because when we took a look at St. Francis, at times there were two, three, four defenders all around the ball. Yeah. Um, we came into the game knowing that we're going to have to step it up on defense to win it and uh, get a good seating for NorCal's. And um, so we came in, we decided that we were going to shut down number five as much as possible um, and make him have more turnovers than he's used to. He's a really good passer. So uh, we all just, uh, we all just um, defended all the other defenders better, or all the other offensive players better. And um, we, we held him to uh, less points than, we, uh, than he was supposed to have. Kevin Sweat, our player of the game. Aiden Matthews, a tremendous performance on the other side for St. Francis. Uh, when he started to pick his game up, all of a sudden your defense sort of started to shift towards Matthews. Was that planned out by Coach Perry? How did you guys approach Matthews getting the ball and then approaching him defensively? Um, well, we started off on number five, face guarding him, not letting him get the ball as much as possible. And when uh, number 10 started hitting a couple threes, we decided to switch that and go face guarding on number 10. Perfect. It, it turned out in your favor. Congratulations, Kevin Sweat, our player of the game. 74-57 is your final. Thank you so much, folks, for tuning in to the Men's Division Five CCS Basketball Championship.